Giants 24, Packers 22. Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And it's a victory Tuesday. Not a victory Monday, but a victory Tuesday. The Giants won on prime time. First Monday night football victory since 2018 versus Nick Mullins and the 49ers, Justin. Um, uh, Tommy DeVito, 3-0. Uh, you know, his last three games, the, the tummy cutless juice is real. Our Giants are one game out of the playoffs. Like, there's so many different little nuggets that just come away from just winning this single game. And, uh, I'm enjoying it. I will talk about it all, break it down, what it means. But it, it was, it was very fun to just be like, I can't believe that the Tommy DeVito Giants are going to win three straight games. Dude, that felt good. <laughs> That felt really good, man. Uh, the vibes at MetLife Stadium were were very fun. Uh, the vibes at the tailgate were were pretty fun too, because it's like going into the game, it's like, well, you know, you can win, and Tommy DeVito Jersey Juice Magic kind of stays alive, or it's like you lose, and it's like, oh, well, you know, you still have a top five traffic. But no, I mean, you, you win, and not only do you win, Bobby, but man, I I kind of feel like. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to put my hand up a little bit and be like, I'm eating a little Tommy DeVito crow right now. Because what did Tommy DeVito do this game that, you know, we we thought that he, you know, had trouble doing? You know, he he avoided sacks, didn't take a single sack this game. Um, he didn't just, he, he scrambled during the right times at 71 rushing yards and didn't just scramble to always tuck and run. That Isaiah Hodgins touchdown was beautiful, was beautiful. And, and Brian Dable actually went into a good extent after the game talking about, well, we did our scramble drills different this week. You know, hey, there's times to tuck it and run. There's times to throw it. He did that. The Wandell Robinson throw on the sideline. This was also the Wandell Robinson game. I thought Tommy DeVito worked the quick game a, a lot better this game. Only one attempt of, of 20 plus yards. So I, I mean a little bit of Tommy DeVito crow because the way that he was successful today and the way that he was successful against the Packers was not how he's been successful in the past. And it was really, really fun to see. And what a fun time at MetLife Stadium Monday night. Yeah, that was the biggest thing to me was uh, it wasn't necessarily that like, oh, well, he's getting to, you know, his second and third reads uh, to avoid these sacks. But he was avoiding sacks, right? There was multiple times where like, oh, here comes here comes the, zap, the sack. Nope, he was able to escape, whether it's, you know, to throw, right? Like he made a, you know, a nice throw to Wandale. Well, that was more of a nice catch, but still made the throw. Uh, you know, the Hodgins play. Uh, and then again, was able to get uh, 72 rushing yards on, on 10 attempts. A couple of those, uh, a few of those from design runs. But, you know, seven of them from, you know, passing plays where he was able to escape up the pocket because Joe Barry just had his guys kind of bailing and playing the softest of zones all yeah. night. It was just there, Barry- especially when they were that entire night just didn't put anybody over the middle of the field. <laughs> yeah, just didn't put anybody over the middle of the field and, and rush four. So if they're, okay, there's going to be a rushing lane there. Take and it. I thought the offensive line did a pretty damn good job pass protecting. Yeah. Uh, not not run blocking, but good job pass protecting. But yeah, he was av- available to avoid those sacks. And then you talk about it like the Isaiah Hodgins touchdown. Like that's a third down and goal at the eight-yard line. That's ballsy for one. And that was just like an A1 amazing throw. So this was absolutely his best game. You know, we're, we're coming into this game. He was like, he was literally 41st of 41 quarterbacks in EPA per play because he took all the sacks and just, you know, kind of lived big. Like the commander's game was boomer bust and it was a lot of like just scheme driven shit. And anything else that like required him playing quarterback was bad. The Patriots game, they scored 10 points. Uh, off of turnovers this game is where DeVito actually was able to like get the ball down the field and and make some plays and get the ball in the Wandale specifically his hands and then a touchdown to Hodgins yeah hand up for me this game again uh 81st percentile in EPA per play 95th percentile in CPOE just just from this game so um awesome stuff uh and not just okay look at the you know he had good EPA and stuff like that from the Washington game but just look at the way that he was successful this game again with avoiding sacks, you know, the mix between the success with scrambling, even the design stuff kind of took me by surprise too and, and seeing how fast he was in, in the open field. I can't get over that Isaiah Hodgins touchdown though. And even the flea, the flea flicker, I actually thought that throw, was, I don't know if it was on purpose, Bobby. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that, on the DeVito throw. DeVito said to Dable that like, my bad, like I under... 
I underthrew that one. Well, I think you had a, I think you had maybe like a safety over the top, but I think you had like a linebacker covering Wandale. So Wandale had, I think Wandale had a better shot of that being underthrown and then him coming back to the ball than if it was thrown in front of him like perfectly. That may be intercepted if it's thrown in front of him. So Wanda Robinson, <laughs> hey, short, shortest guy ever. Wanda Robinson goes up and makes a play uh, twice, like basically on that sideline with that short wingspan and then goes up and makes a play over that linebacker. Like just just as much as this is Tommy DeVito's game and Tommy DeVito's going to get all the love and you have his father kissing the agent, the agent kissing the father and then the father kissing the son, you know, all all the Italian stuff that Tommy DeVito is. Like this is just as much as like a Wandell Robinson game too, which the I I the moment that I freaked out the most over, like that I like lost it besides the fat Randy uh, you know, uh field goal to win the game was Wanda Robinson coming back on that flea flicker to catch that ball. Like, that's so freaking awesome. Yeah, that to me, that's like that ended up working out, but that was a throw where DeVito probably shouldn't have thrown it. But Wandale, your five foot eight, zero percentile arm length, <laughs> was able to adjust and, and go back and, and catch the ball. Um, so good on Wandale. And I do want to talk to uh, about his game just in general. Um, so, yeah, but with DeVito, this was. Again, avoiding the sacks, creating rushing uh, yards from by avoiding the sacks, not just avoiding the sacks to throw the ball away, um, avoiding the sacks to uh, cr- you know create time and then throw the ball to guys like Isaiah Hodgins for a touchdown. You know there was the throw to Wandale where Wandale made the spectacular catch uh, on the sideline that Green Bay ended up challenging and and obviously did not get overturned. And then, yeah, you're able to use him in the read option, which got him down there for like a Saquon pounded in touchdown. So, just I don't know how, how much did you guys, this was happening in the stadium. Like the Tommy DeVito fever, I called him like Italian Tim Tebow. You know, people was like comparing it to, you know, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Lin, Lin. The, the Lin Sanity run. It truly feels like we are in one of those moments, right? We are. And, it's like now I'm at a point where it's like just turn this into a playoff run. Turn I don't care if you end up losing the playoffs, you get smoked. Just turn this into a playoff run to just make it that much more fun. Uh, so uh, credit to, and Devito didn't start the game very well either. Too like you you know first four drives are like this is not good ball being played, but to kind of keep uh, going and then you know that last throw to Juan Dale at the end of the game was a I just fired it in there. Great route by Juan Dale. But I mean, I mean, Justin. They show they showed Devito's family more than they did Brian Dable or basically <laughs> anybody that wasn't Tommy Devito on the broadcast. See LPG tweeting out like the size, the size of the Devito family at the tailgate. I don't know if oh, all yeah, of them were family members. Plus but... people, like we're gonna have to we're gonna have to worry about a training camp next year <sighs> that we might get jumped in the parking lot. Hey, no, like um, I, hey, I'm hey, my hands up, Devito. Hopefully, Devito families listen. My hand, my hands up for this week, uh, dude. You know, it it, it was fun. It, it was fun. It, hey, for this one night. It was it was magical stuff. Um, and, and you know you know you mentioned on the Giants' offense. You know it, it wasn't a masterful game by by the Giants' offense. Their longest drive that didn't result in a score, either a field goal or a touchdown. Their longest drive was six plays, twenty six yards. That was the longest drive of the game that didn't result in a score. So really, like uh, it was either touchdown, field goal, or, or, or bust. Basically, where where they were going, you know, six plays, five plays, or even three and out. Um, they had an eight play drive of seventy five yards. That was for a touchdown. They had their touchdown drive, three plays, 31 yards. I believe that was following a turnover. Um, 10 plays, 75 yards. Um, and then they had, obviously, the eight-play drive, 57 yards to end the game in the fourth quarter. Um, but I want to read this stat, you know, another Tommy DeVito stat um, from Opta Stats Since 1950, only one NFL starting quarterback has completed 80% of his passes, rushed for 70-plus yards, committed no turnovers, and taken no sacks in a game. That's Tommy DeVito. I, I, if you said one other QB did that, I was going to be like, did Daniel Jones do that in one nope. game? Because that feels like a Daniel Jones stat line. Um, it's, it's the no sacks. I mean, re- really, that's the thing that's – and, and hey, this is also credit to the Giants' offensive line as, as well. Like, when is the last time – I almost wanted to look this up before Je- – Jeff, maybe you can look it up as we're, as we're talking about this. When was the last time there was a game where a, a quarterback didn't take a sack or the offensive line didn't allow a sack in a Giants game? I can't tell you. Yeah, I don't know. But, the, I mean, the, the tackles were doing well, pass protecting. I want to go see – because obviously DeVito had the scrambles. I want to go rewatch the interior pass protection a little more. 
But all, Thomas was locked down. Like, you didn't hear Rashawn Gary's name at all. Like, was, was Rashawn Gary even playing? Didn't, didn't feel like it. Like, I'm serious. Like, I, 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 maybe Rashawn Gary didn't play, you know? And, you know, last year, Kenny Clark was like the one of two guys who really got the best of Ben Bredesen last year. Um, and you didn't hear him much. Like, TJ Slayton, the one, you, it was very funny. Did you see the play where TJ Slayton just jumps off sides and they hand it off to Brita? And they're like, man, you got a great jump on the ball. It's like, yeah, he's literally off Well, they didn't sides. call it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't call it, but they're like, great jump on the ball. It's like, no. Nope. It was very, I, I was thinking the same thing in the moment. Yeah, and they, and they didn't call it. Uh, let's talk about Juan Dale specifically. Yes, please. Um, actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's oh, talk about to, Manscaped let, before yeah, let's we talk, talk about, about Isaiah Hodgins. You know who uses Manscaped? Good call. Not you Isaiah do. Hodgins. I mean, actually, he probably does too, but Juan Dale Robinson, who we're going to talk about. Um, so Manscaped is here for you for this time of the year. It turns out the perfect gift does exist, and who else to bring it to? Uh, bring it to you. Then the leaders in below the waist grooming. Keep calm and let your balls feel good this season with Manscaped's brand new performance package 5.0 Ultra. What? 5.0 Ultra? That's that's freaking beautiful. So look nice when you're gonna be a little little bad by going to manscaped.com and use code Giants for 20% off plus free shipping. Get the gift of smoothness this year with Manscaped. Included in, the, in this uh, special uh, package is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Trimmer. Got to get those ears and nose trimmed. Manscaped's liquid formulations and two free gifts. Again, the Lawnmower 4 5.0 Ultra is the main big thing. It's the best and it's the biggest. This fifth generation trimmer features two next gen blade heads, a standard trimmer blade for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go for that smooth finish wherever your heart desires. Get 20% off and free shipping with code giants at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code giants manscaped. You'll be glad you did. Here's a uh, couple, here's a couple plays you like go out and rip that son of a bitch. Yeah. That's uh, so I actually got to see the all twenty two because Ryan Clark did a like a little video of it on ESPN. Oh, nice! That Wandale Robinson and Brian Dable did. Brian Dable, I, that was the most cocky I've seen him in a press conference. It was basically like he was, he's like, yeah, you guys asked me about Wandale last week, and you know he had a big game. I think you guys asked me about this last week. Yeah, that ended up, like was pretty cocky. After did you hear how he ended the presser? How he ended it? No. He 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 said to he turned to Pat, he said Pat which he was talking to Pat Hanlon, he was like Pat do do we gotta do we gotta do we gotta do we have to do anything tomorrow? And what he said what what time is it? And at that time it was eleven fifty. He's like you know we we gotta get ready for New Orleans. So what 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 do you got? What do you if we're gonna talk at eleven thirty? What are you guys gonna ask me at eleven thirty that you're not gonna ask me now? So he was like being sarcastic to the I've I've never heard him like that. Never heard him be that sarcastic for that long of a period of time. Where it's like, what are you guys going to ask me at 11.30 a.m. that you're not going to ask me right now? And then one of the reporters responded, well, we got to look back at the tape. And he's like, nice. Yeah, after, whoever said that, that was actually a pretty good response. That was a good reply. Good Did rebuttal. You, they also had uh, um, the DeVito family on the lo- Giants like live stream after the game, too. Which is like, they, uh, they are stars. Like His agent is a cartoon character. His agent's not a real person. No, his agent has always been Italian. He is definitely playing it up. <laughs> um, you know, I, and I think he might have bought a flip phone, too, to make it even no way. more so. That's the burner phone. Yeah, like, I think he bought a flip phone to, like, to he play th- into it a little bit. He threw that in the waste management garbage can outside the stadium after the game. Yeah, he's like, record me, you know, breaking this phone in half and throwing it in the trash yeah. can. Um, so uh, you saw Ryan Clark... Uh, talk about a Wanda Robinson playing all 22. So Wanda Robinson had 115 total yards on six catches for 79 yards and then Hell two yeah. carries for 35 yards. He was 50% of all the passing yards. Um, And it wasn't just that, oh, he had a good yardage game, right? Like his plays led to the Giants, you know, winning the game. You know, he had the 32 yard rush on the first touchdown drive, which, you know, got them down there the sake one. You know, like the first touchdown drive of the game, they had one pass 
past the line of scrimmage, and that was the RPO to Isaiah Hodgins. He was able to get it down there. And then on the, you know, the, the next one, the, yeah, the 25 yard catch on the flea flicker led to a touchdown drive. And then the 32 yard catch on the final drive of the game. It's that the one throw that I think DeVito has consistently like made you like, Oh, that's, that's, that's good. Way the way he, the way he runs this concept is good is that flood concept, right? It's a concept we've talked about on, on this podcast and on our love film that reviews play. for years, right? It's a three level high to low read. It's a Madden play. She's, it's a zone it's a zone beater, right? But if you get guys who can win versus man, they can be a man beater, right? And I've liked the way DeVito's done it, right? Like even threw the go ball to Shep a couple times, you know, didn't convert. Like it was a good decision. But it's also been able to throw that corner, that second level of it. Like even in that Raiders game, right? Uh, you know, like, like that Raiders game was really bad, but he like fired it in there on the corner to Daniel Bellinger in, in the little soft spot of the zone. So this game you know, he did miss uh, Wandale earlier in the game on that route. But Wandale on that one that ended up being essentially the game-winning play, I mean, he's got this guy in man coverage. He's flat-footed. And the way he's like, the defender has outside leverage. And the way Wandale just so quickly, bam, gets gets to that outside leverage and then breaks it off. And then obviously makes the play. was just beautiful. Wandale just made play after play in this game. Like you said, the 32-yard rush, the flea flicker catch, this catch, the crazy catch he had on the sideline. And there was other plays uh, within there too, you know, to reverse for five or six yards. And again, he also like, he got missed on the first drive of the game where a wide open pass. This was Wandale Robinson's best game. And it was, you know, not just used on whip routes and slants and speed outs like he was actually used down the field which i do think they envisioned for Juan Dale when they drafted him as not just your slot cole beasley type but someone they they could actually attack down the field with yeah he there was a there were some plays where hyatt was the slot wide receiver and wandell robinson was the lone receiver on the outside where you had hyatt and slayton on the same side with each other then it was wanda robson one v one with the corner on his own side of the field which i thought was pretty was pretty noteworthy and it, and it caught my eye a little bit um yeah i mean really the thing that impressed me the most from from this game about wandale's just a, a, a perfect balance where 79 total receiving yards 29 yards are coming after the catch but you also had 69 total, and this is from Doug Analytics tweeted this out, 69 total air yards, 55% of all New York Giants air yards. So this is a guy that's getting yards after the catch, but it's also a guy that was able to get the air yards. And, you know, when Tommy DeVito was pushing the ball down the field, hey, this game it was going to to Wondell Robinson. And 9.9 average depth of target, Well, also he averaged 5.1 yards of separation per target as well, which that's that's huge. You know, usually guys that are getting targeted a little bit deeper down the field, that av- that average you know separation per target number, uh, number is a little bit down, not for Wondell Robinson. So again, really encouraging sign. Two rushes for 36 yards, I believe on the one where it got him to the one-yard line. I think he hit slightly over 20 miles per hour. So Wondell Robinson since fast and anyway, i'm saying that, said this a couple times this year that i'm really excited for wandell robinson's 2024 because you know it's the second year coming off the acl this offseason he's actually going to be allowed to you know not just working on rehabbing the knee but he's going to be able to work on it well how can i improve as a receiver how can i get bigger stronger faster etc um, so the fact that he's performing this well now and the fact even though he hasn't had games like this throughout this year when he's facing single man coverage, we talked. We 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 read this stat on the mailbag this past week. Single man coverage, he has the best separation numbers against single man coverage this year. Um, so Wanda Robinson has been getting open this year, and I'm really glad the Giants took the bye week or whatever they saw against the Packers. I'm glad they took the bye week because like this guy's getting open. Let's try and get the ball in his hands in some different ways. And they did this past week, and he he was like one. Of, he was like the engine that made the Giants offense go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was like specific because of Joe Barry's defense. And we, we talked about this on the preview pod, Justin, that like for a defense that was like ranked top 10 in scoring, it's like I, I just, this defense puts no fear into you. Yeah. Now they put an emphasis on stopping the run, uh, and we're flowing heavy on that, which we'll talk, we can talk about it in a second. But this led to some of the DeVito scrambles and, you know, some of the one, I mean, they just, like, played deathly afraid of Darius Slayton and Jalen Hyatt. 
Now, I, I you got to respect those guys, but they played. I mean, they were turning and bailing. Like, they were just turning and running with those guys. And it, even on the, which ended up being a touchdown drive, the Giants had third and nine. Third and nine. They run a, th- a three man route, right? And then they keep in the back. I can't remember if it was Saquon or somebody else. And Daniel Bellinger um, block and releases. And they just, t- DeVito throws it to De- uh, Bellinger on the block and release. And he just runs like easily to a first down. Where it's like their linebackers were playing like dropping back 15, 20 yards. While also their safeties and corners are playing off. Like, um, like it would drive me nuts if he was my defensive coordinator. Was he the uh, defensive coordinator when Blake Martinez was there too? No, that was um. I feel like uh, it's, what's his face, uh, uh, Pet, uh Pettin, the I guy who like was it, a head coach back in the day for the Browns. I feel like it's similar shit though. Like I, I like you know leaving your linebackers on islands and asking those guys to do a lot, leaving the middle of the field open. I f- I feel like it's all it's all similar stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I'm glad. I may, maybe they didn't think that Tommy DeVito was gonna be able to check it down and. You know, work work some of the, the the quick game elements. You know, maybe they thought that Tommy DeVito would take more sacks and always look to push the ball down the field, but not the case. Uh, nice to see that. You know, the bye week happened and Tommy DeVito had certain improvements and really really improved on at least for this game some of the things that he was struggling with. And this is this is kind of a this is kind of a mailbag point, but I'll tell you what this game and this Tommy DeVito run is a really good affirmation for not just for like oh the Tommy DeVito Italian story is fun I am extremely confident in Brian Dable and even I'm throwing Mike Kafka in here too I thought Mike Kafka had a good game besides whatever the fuck we were doing with Mark Lewinsky out on the field so much we need to stop that e- even though the touchdown was really sweet and they like leveled the entire yeah, he left just, side he of just the like killed eight people he just basically rolled up on eight people I don't ever want to see that again who? Trying Mark to get Le- people killed out here. Mark Lewinsky? Yeah. You're, you, you you didn't like that, that he just launched himself into people? No, he could have killed Andrew Thomas. Like, I don't oh. want him rolling up on Andrew Thomas's and JMS and Ben Bredesen or whoever's fucking legs. I don't the want entire to see that le- The entire left side of the line fell down. And I'm like, that, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Basically, he just cut blocked the entire offensive line, which ended up like cut blocking the D. Like, yeah, worked on that play, but. But you saw on other runs where they just would flow heavy. Like there was, yeah. there was like three, there much. was like three, there was like three or four third and ones that they like didn't get. It's it's absolutely infuriating um, that like it, it seems like it's an issue this year. Even though I guess the stats say the Giants are good on third and short. I don't know. Anyway, what's my point? My point is this: seeing what the Giants are doing with Tommy DeVito, this guy is not supposed to be doing this. He's not. I feel very comfortable with Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, th- this co- this regime and this coaching staff with even if it's not a quarterback that's like Drake May, Caleb Williams, top five pick, even if it's a guy that they want to, let's just say, like th- this year they're going to find their Hendon Hooker. They apparently really liked Hendon Hooker la- in last year's draft, and they want to take him in the third round. I'm now at a point where I'm a little bit, especially now with Daniel Jones, I'm at a point where I'm a little bit more open to that than I was before, knowing that how they could develop quarterbacks on the fly. You're seeing what they're doing with Tommy DeVito. Yeah, I just, and again, I've changed my stance on that because you've seen some success stories with guys like Jalen Hurts, but I still am for the most part. Like, if you want your quarterback, get your quarterback, don't. But because of the DJ contract, I could see them. I can see them doing like it's yeah. kind of playing out almost exactly. And they're, and they're like, winning games, and, and you know they're they're winning games. So now, you know, I, I whatever they want to do, like I'm I'm comfortable with it because I know that they're going to have the tools and they have the coaching and they have a plan for even if this is a third string UDFA, the goal is for you to never see the field. There's a plan and there's an outline on how to make how to put this guy in a position to be successful. I mean, I mean, hell, they even did it for DJ last year, and then they asked him to take a big boy step up, a forty million dollar top ten step up, and he couldn't do it. So 
Um, that that's really what, along with you know, hey, Tommy DeVito magic and you know, and DeVito insanity. That's like along with like I'm feeling awesome about our coach's ability to you know even take a quarterback that isn't supposed to be here. And hey, we're we're we were talking a month ago, Bobby. The season was over, and we're talking about can Dable in the court of public opinion somehow save his job. And now we're talking about can the Giants somehow, even though it's very improbable, make a you know make a run at the playoffs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's been it's been absolutely amazing offensive coaching um, with DeVito, right? Like the Commanders yeah. game. I know they're playing Del Rio, but again, having a, like a really good game plan for this Joe Barry defense um, and coaching DeVito up uh, in this, right? And yeah. not being like, hey, not turn over the ball. Like I started getting a little frustrated with like, well, he's not turning over the ball. Or it's like, yeah, well, he takes he – because does, he doesn't – he just takes a sack instead. And that's why, he, again, he was – dead last in the NFL and EPA play Not coming Monday. into this game. Um, but this game was able to avoid those. I mean, interesting to see, like, I, and that's where I'd be frustrated if I was a Packers fan. Like, why are we not blitzing this guy? Why are we not blitzing this guy? Are we that, are we that fra- afraid of Jalen Hyatt and Darius Slayton that we just can't blitz this guy at all? Um, what do you think of the Saquon fumble? I don't know how much they showed a replay of it. One, he just needs to hold on to the ball in the first place. Like, you got to know the time and place. Hold on to the damn ball. And the game's essentially over. Yeah. I'm looking at Benton Whitley on the TV right now, which we'll talk about. Um, How? Why is he on your TV? Because he fucking recovered the fumble that led to a touchdown. Because he's the best. He's dude. It's I had that. I had like a, a, a like a I'm a freaking kingmaker moment. Like the guy <laughs> I randomly pick, he has the pass deflection, and then he ca- recovers a fumble that ends up being, uh, you know, leading to a touchdown. Is Anyways. he the new? Uh, is he the new Nico Lelos? Or maybe he's the new Chris Myrick. Oh no, can't be stopped, dude. If he gets, if he gets a, if he gets like a sack, interception, something the next week, he is absolutely the new Chris Myrick. Uh, and I cannot wait to freaking yell at him in training camp. Maybe he'll sign our sign. Uh here's your. Sign. Here's what I got frustrated. Saquon needs to hold on to that ball, right? And again, Saquon, the Giants' run blocking is atrocious. Saquon had 2.8 yards per carry on all of the other attempts in the game. We can talk more about that on the mailbag if we, if we so desire. I was just getting so frustrated. It was like, well, he regained his balance. It's like, no, he didn't. He fell down. Like, just because it took him, like, eight yards to fall down doesn't mean that he was, like, he was down. Like, he got tripped, and he tried to regain his balance, but he didn't, and he fell down. Like, he was down by contact to me. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, like... Th- th- why do you people think he fell down? Like, oh, well, he regained his balance. Well, clearly he did not regain his balance because he fell down. Hey, he, literally, he, he was literally, his ankle was touched and he was yeah, tripped. he was tripped and he started losing his balance. He started to try and regain his balance, but wasn't able to. So, I mean, was there ever a rule? I need, this is the one thing I need an explanation on. No, it was and, like the quickest review ever. It was so like. There was not an explanation given on, like, is it. How many steps do you like? I I can no, imagine that's, a, that's definitely a referee makes it up as we go. We called this on the field. We're going to keep it this. I can imagine there's a rule of if you take like let's just say hey th- three four steps uh, after a defender tackles you, then you reestablish yourself as a blah 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 blah. But I need an I want an explanation on that just just for myself because that was that was bullshit. <laughs> that was yeah. bullshit. Now I know he only, he only has three career fumbles. I get it. Was there another time this year where the Giants had an opportunity where they were running like a four minute drill and Saquon did something bad? I feel like this is the second time this year where something like this happened. I think he's had a, another fumble loss this year in a big moment. Yeah. Which hey, that's not a referendum on Saquon Barkley's career, but I remember at some point this year saying. Bro, was it the Jets game? Um, where I was like, bro, man, like you don't get this many opportunities to do this. Like the four minute drill where the Giants need to seal the game, and it's you, man. Like th- this is what you sign up for. And I and I know this offensive line ain't great, but in the moments in which they are opening up holes and the moments in which the game is on the line, you got to do it because this is what you sign up for. This is what you want. This is why you want to. This is why you want a contract. This is why you want to be known as a top five, you know, best running back in the National Football League. And when you have moments like that, 
That's why you're not known as the best running back in the league. It, it, it was a tough call, um, he, but he, still. He um, lost you the fumble hold on versus to the Commanders in the Tyrod Taylor game. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, shoot. Well, yeah, that was really close to if. Yeah, if the, they were going to go down and score and tie the game, but the defense shut it down. Yes. Yes. And oh, it was yeah. it was almost was like the a exact very exact same situation essentially exact same situation and the defense you know was able to to shut them down and do what they do what they got to do so um, quick do you remember what his other, so that would be his so he has second. three fumbles lost in his career do you remember the first one no um, I don't think it was last year I think it might have been week one of twenty nineteen versus the Cowboys but he might have picked that one up that make that uh, that sound that sounds familiar. Because for his career, he has just like two, 20. He only had one fumble in 2019, two fumbles in 2021, one last year, and then two this year now. Let's see, 2019. Let's see if I got trivia right. This is how you do trivia, Danny King. And this is really, it, it was, dude, it was really frustrating the fact that he lost the fumble on that play because. I you know he I called him my giant factor for for this past week and I said dude I want to see you break a tackle, I want to see you br- like just just break a tackle because he like hasn't done that this year and he really hasn't done it consistently since 2018 2019 and I'm sorry if you want to get this top running back money if you want to be known as a top running back in the National Football League you got to be able to break some tackles and he finally did it. And it was like on that play where he like broke two tackles where he fumbled. And I'm like, yes, yes, look at this run, look at this run, look at this run. Fumble. <laughs> Gives the ball. I'm, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> oh, I was ready to clip all three of those runs, but like game on the line, Saquon puts together some nice runs. And, and it was going to be an awesome giant factor. Like, yes, yeah, seal the game. And, and you know, it, it was like, yeah, You're like, good job, Justin. And nope. Nope, nope, nope. Isaiah Hodgins, giant factor. Isaiah Hodgins. Um, that was a good one. Yeah. The, it was not the 2019 opener. It was in 2021 against the Cowboys in the 21 to six loss. Oh, he only that played. was the he, he game I got game. Sp- I got kicked off Twitter and almost got my Twitter account permanently banned because of that game. Was it? Oh, was that the? Uh, that wasn't the Kadarius Tony game, right? No, it was a. It was a. It was a Mike Lennon game. Oh well, no, that was also a Jake Fromm game. I think that was the Jake from the Kenny Galladay. Game. Yep, that was the Jake from. I was I was in the DraftKings suite. That's why I have no memory of that happening because I was not concentrating on the game when I was in the DraftKings suite where Jake from was starting. Where, <laughs> when do we get to go back in the DraftKings suite? I don't know. I haven't gone the last couple of years. That is not the, the I I've I've given ideas before to DraftKings. Be like, hey, let's like legit like live stream a game from the suite. But maybe I'll throw it out there again. We'll we'll see we'll see what they say. Um, any other offensive notes? Hodgins, well, nice you catch. About something? Hodgins, nice catch. Uh, producer Jeff sent us a note. Uh, the last time the Giants did not give up a sack was last year against the Colts Week 17, so I guess it's happened more frequently than I thought. I remember it happened the first two games after Mark Colombo got fired. And then against the Commanders Week 15, because every good offensive stat that the Giants have had the last couple of years, somehow the Commanders are tied with it. Uh, Bobby Skinner, we are going to talk about the farmer's dog. The results of switching your dog's food from kibble to fresh can seem like magic. Magic. You ever seen Night at the Museum? It's the Huns that they say, magic. But the farmer's dog doesn't use any sorcery or secret ingredients to make their fresh food just science. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. Got an email recently. The farmer's dog is like, Mikey's food is almost on the way, and it's almost being prepped. And I and I got excited for my dog because I know how much he loves it and he enjoys it. So I love that they're sending Mikey some more healthy ingredients to human food safety standards, and they're sending him some more food. The farmer's dog also sends the food pre-proportioned specifically for your dog based on the unique nutritional needs. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their Health, get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash jamboy. Plus, you get free shipping. That's thefarmersdog.com slash jamboy for 50% off. Whoa. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Defensively, Jordan Love sucks. Now, I don't want to judge him off of this one game. Caveat. But the wind? No, 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 no. No, no, before we talk about how Jordan... Because Jordan Love was not good this game. And Jordan Love 
looked like the Jordan Love to start the year because the yes. start to start the year Jordan Love is not accurate. But I want to give a caveat to this because over the last month, Jordan Love has been an accurate quarterback. Jordan Love has been an effective quarterback. Where it, the Green Bay Packers, it's it, it, like they've improved over the last month, and they've been you know one of the league's hotter teams because Jordan Love has improved. So you know, I, I know like he, hey, quarterbacks performing bad or quarterbacks performing bad, but and I'm not gonna give Wink Martindale on the pass rush all the credit for Jordan Love being bad because even in clean pockets he was missing guys. But I do think Wink Martindale and whatever he was throwing at Jordan Love. Clearly, it was something different than what he's been saying the last month because he has not been this bad. And also, I mean, the caveat, too, is Christian Watson, Aaron Jones, two very good players for the Packers were out as well. I would say Christian Watson being the biggest the biggest guy being out because that's he's also made kind of that offense churn over the last couple of weeks. Well, he was missing on, like, little out routes and, like, like literally on that like one of the first drives of the game. Where it's like the Giants were playing off. It was like a third and three. He just goes and throws like just throws the pass out to him, uh, and he missed. Uh, like he was just to me was missing wildly. Even some like the that throw to Tucker Craft that you know Cordell Flock couldn't make the tackle on. Even that was like that that looked like he had no confidence in that throw and was just like kind of throwing it. Uh, I thought he just missed con- missed consistently. Right. I, I don't think it was like this to me. Is like what do you? So you were in the stadium, so you got to see a little bit better. Like, what did you see from, like, Wink Martindale's defense in this? Because, I honestly, I thought it was one of his more basic game plans. Like, now, the end of the game, they got cover zero crazy, right? Like, actual cover zero sending everybody. But for the most part, it was kind of like his basic, like, cover one, and then we'll play quarters. It's like, cover cover one or quarters. Like, it was kind of like the first five weeks of the season, what his defense was. You no, know, he, showed, he showed that he was going to come in and blitz, and I thought that... You know, they did a good job of of mixing looks of, you know, hey, even if they're not going to bring cover zero looks and they're going to bring, you know, six, seven, whatever guys, there would be times where, you know, McKinney would come in or a safety would come in, interior linebacker would come in, but Jihad Ward would drop out. I mean, and, that, and that's what Wink Martindale does. Um, on the Jordan Love interception, I don't know if you saw this and I don't know if the broadcast was able to really capture it. I'm pretty sure... Xavier McKinney on the yes. Jason Pinnock interception did get a hand on Jordan Love's ball. So that was, hey, that was a nice little blitz package of Xavier McKinney going around the corner and getting a hand on Jordan Love, that that pa- uh, that ball, and, you know, Jason Pinnock is able to intercept it. So I, I will agree. It's not like, I don't think Wink Martindale did anything elaborate, but I still think showing the cover zero stuff and showing guys in the A gap, B gap, wherever, um, I, I think it throws guys for a loop. And I something we saw a lot of different, personnel packages for the Giants defense this game in particular a lot of a lot of five linebacker sets with three edge rushers on the field at one time because they were using Dexter Lawrence as basically a pass rush specialist they were he was not playing on first and second down it was a Sean Robinson Nacho and Jordan Riley and DJ Davidson would would shuffle into every once in a while Dexter Lawrence was not playing on first and second down he would really only come in for third downs yeah, yeah, that's the I I like look at the snap count right now, but you're right, he was used as a pass rush pass, but still was able to get a sack with Aziz Ojolari, which was good yeah. to see. You kind of forgot that Aziz was on the team. Aziz had a good game. I mean, uh, hey, they were running that Jaden Reed, which I also thought the Packers' offense on Matt Lafour was being a little dumb sometimes after after the Jaden Reed stuff worked like the first half. I thought they went back to the well with it too many times in the second half, and then. They would have, like, successful first down plays where it's, like, second and five, second and four, second and whatever. And then they would have really bad second down plays that Mm -hmm. put them in third and long. And that that was, like, the difference in the game. The difference in the game, and and I'm pretty sure one of those towards the end of the game was Jaden Reed did one of those, another one of those sweeps. And instead of running it towards Kayvon, they ran it towards Aziz. Huge tackle for loss, and I'm pretty sure that set up a did that set up a sack or did it set up a set up a bad series of events for the Packers? Yeah, it set up that third. It set up the third down sack by Dex and Aziz, and then it, it set up to the missed field goal after that. Yeah, yes, yeah, and they did that. They did a couple of like double reverse, like you know, try to do something. Like they did get a little too cute. Now the the wide receiver sweeps were working in the beginning of the game. 
like that Jaden, you know, they scored a touchdown on it with Jaden Reed. I know everyone will talk about cave on on that. And like, oh, why is he not chasing that? It really is working because the Giants DBs are so bad in the run this year. Like you saw Cordell Flott takes a weird angle. So Adore takes uh, like a bad angle because he sees Cordell Flott's angle. And then it's just, you see him just running past Adore Jackson. Like that shit type of shit shouldn't have happened. And you saw him like they got, uh, I can't remember if it was Reed. I think it was Reed again. Where they just got blockers out there and they're blocking these these cats up. Um, so it, to me, it's just more of like the Giants DBs are just bad at you know tackling and finding their lanes. I feel like that's something to be coached up. Dex only played forty three percent of the snaps. Um, Ashawn and Nacho played more than him. Yeah, Dable um, said at the end of the game that he was on a pitch count, and clearly yeah. the the pitch count was he was going to come in on third down. Yeah, so so that was um ended up being true. Good job by uh, Oshawn though. Like I think Oshawn had like almost ten tackles. Um, you know, at least my my eyes said the Packers were not I mean, they weren't able to get chunk gains on the ground. They weren't able to get like six, seven, eight, nine yards consistently unless, unless it was Patrick it was, Taylor. Unless it was going to like Jaden Reed and like one of those sweeps or they were using some sort of misdirection. When they were running the ball up the middle, um, you know, the, the interior guys held up and, you know, linebackers held up too. So it, I thought it was a for, – for a game where Dex was on that pitch count and not out there on running downs, I thought they did a, a pretty damn good job holding up. But also the Packers are not a very good running team to begin with. Yeah. I, I like Patrick Taylor, their backup, their third string running back, who I thought he actually was pretty productive. He had a couple a, a nice catch. Now, I, I, this happened last week, I guess twice. Uh, in the two minute drill in the end of the half, he has like this clear path to go out of bounds and he like just forcefully stays in bounds. I don't know if you saw it. Matt LaFleur takes his headset off and look like he wanted to throw at him. Like, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Like, are you serious? You did this again, you dumb motherfucker. Like, it was very funny. Like, if, like, I, I clipped it up. I was like, I think Matt LaFleur wanted to throw his headset at Patrick Taylor. Yeah, he kind of um, like got maybe like four extra yards very unnecessarily that took time off the clock. So, yes, I did. He notice spun that. back inside, like into a tackle. It was hilarious. It's almost like he, he thought, like, I'm going to go out of bounds here. Like, he, he wanted to, and then he's like, nope, he like Ahmad Bradshaw, like in, in Super Bowl 46, like, nope, I'm just going to, my body's going to do whatever it wants to do. So that was, uh, that was, that was, that was interesting for sure. What Men- else am I going to say? Mention Kayvon on the reverses. I, I thought, was going to say, had, yes. He had the sack. He had some run stops. He had a great um, game. A he great had game. a pass deflection on the, at the line of scrimmage. Then he had a forced fumble because Jordan, uh, Jordan Love, again, just dumb. Like, they run that third and two read option. You have your receiver blocking Adora Jackson. Just run to the corner, and for some reason, he fucking cuts it up. And good on Kayvon for going and pulling that ball out of yep. the McKinney getting in. Like that was another huge play uh, for them. I think this was Kayvon, one of Kayvon's best games of the year. I think the Jets game is up there. Um, but in turn, I think Jordan Love is getting rid of the ball pretty quick. So there, like the the impact of the pass rush wasn't wasn't there to be seen, but. I think he made a ton of impact plays against the run. I thought he really set a nice edge. He obviously had the pass break up. I thought they would give him a foot. Where did Mike and McFadden come from in that sack? They gave him a half a sack. Yeah, I don't understand where, why Mike McFadden got a half a sack. They got to correct no that. Sense. They got to correct that. They got to they got to give Kayvon, Kayvon the full sack. Uh, I believe uh, who tweeted the set? Somebody tweeted the set. I'm sorry, I'm not giving you credit. Uh, first Giants player with 12 plus sacks since JPP in 2014. So. I think it might uh, have been Bengal. Bengal. Big game Bengal. Thank you. Um, but I, I thought Kayvon had one of his best games of the entire year. And, you know, it, it doesn't show up with, like, two sacks or anything crazy. But, like, really setting the edge and having an impact uh, on – overall impact on the game. I felt like Kayvon was was there and was all over the field tonight, which was awesome. Right. Uh, Pinnock had the interception again off of the Xavier McKinney pressure. Oh, was that, uh, a, and- was, was that a touchdown, by the way? That I don't he, think he it was out. like it's because he he kind of didn't have like total control and he only took two steps. That was going to say like I know they scored anyways, but like that was a like clutch play to to pop that ball out. Like that could have been you know potentially you know, winning and losing. Obviously yeah. they were able to score the touchdown on the little rub that they ran against the cover zero on the on the next play, but still really good stuff there by by Jason Pinnock. Speaking of clutch he did plays, have the missed tackle on the big AJ Dillon. Yeah, uh, catch and run too, though. I feel like you're going to get that, everyone. That I feel like that's the beauty of Jason Pinnock. 
Um, speak, speaking of really, clutch plays. The only guy who I thought really struggled on defense, at least from you know watching it live and then a, a quick rewatch of broadcast, was Flott. I thought this was Cordell Flott's worst game of the game. He was getting abuse all game long. Um, you know, whether it's the Tucker Craft, you know, big play at the end. Uh, Jaden Reed just ran through his fucking chest on one play, and then there was just multiple times where he gave up catches and man coverage. Uh, it's tough, tough game for Flawed in this one. There was a Packer fan at one point of the game that was saying, throw it at 28. So that's that tells never you. Good. Never that's, good, never good. <laughs> until probably a casual Green Bay Packer fan is picking up that Cordell Flawed is somebody that maybe you could pick on. I, I will say, here, here's somebody who, you know, speaking of clutch plays. Banks. That Deontay Banks play was very, it was like a, it was a hold your breath play, <laughs> but, you know, man, it was a clutch play and, you know, obviously and didn't, too. didn't interfere with the guy and forces that incompletion pass deflection. That was on a third and 10, right? That's another yeah. like difference between winning and losing game. Now, again, love under through it. Like I would be so annoyed at Jordan Love if I was a Packers fan. I'd be, it'd be like Jordan Love and Joe Barry. I'd be pissed off at, um, but because love is his first year, I'd have some grace, and I'd be talking about the last three games. Uh, but yeah, that was a great play by Banks. Good, good job getting his hand on the ball and breaking that up. And again, the Giants again. They got a lot of clips of McGahee, by the way, in this game, uh, of just because there was all the special teams blunders. Like at the Lawrence Cager one, where he touched it, Bobby McCain. Uh, they had, and then they had. Uh, yeah, that was that was it. But one special teams play was Justin Benton Whitley, number forty eight, recovers a fumble. The Giants score a touchdown a few plays later. I'm telling you, I'm speaking Benton Whitley into existence. This is a Benton Whitley podcast. I might just go ahead and change the Talking Giants podcast name right now. Don't. I might do it because you can change it. You're allowed to change it. You just got to wait to change it back. Don't do that. I mean, you want to change it on Twitter? Yeah, that's what I mean. Not oh, okay. the actual Apple podcast. Uh, you know, yeah, all right. Change it on Twitter. Can we change? I'm going to see. Change it on Twitter. Do, can we do it right now? I did reach a point in this game again where but I believe this, the, the special team stuff really happened like in the second half. But, I mean, we, we were looking at it again, Bobby, where the defense forced like two turnovers in the first half. And, by the way, according to Dan Duggan, Giants have 12 takeaways in their past three games. No team has more takeaways the past four weeks, and that includes a bye week for the Giants during that stretch. So thank you to thank you to Dan Duggan. I got to a point where I was like, are we really going to have Wink Martindale leave as defense coordinator for this team when the ways in which this year's team has tried to screw over the defense is incredible, and they continually respond? I love watching them. And something that isn't really talked about enough, I mean, you know, we, we talked about how the Packers offense, they, you know, the Packers have like the youngest team in the NFL. The Giants defense is the youngest defense in the National Football League. And they are playing like this. This is, they're, they're playing like this. And we're going to let this defense coordinator go. Yeah, they got to figure out a way to do it. And, and they even mentioned on the broadcast because they talked to Wink and they asked about it. And like, yep, he was very bland in his answer when asked about it and just repeated what he told the, the beat reporters this past week. So, and I mean, we didn't get to talk much about that press conference since. Like, the idea, like, oh, Wink said he believes in what they're doing here. Like, he did, he made, went out of his way to not really deny anything. It's like, yeah, this kind of stuff happens when you're bad. Like, so that that shit is. I, if anyone's saying that like that shit's not real, you are living in denial. Um, and I am very convinced is, denial is not just a river oh. in Egypt. And I am very convinced that he wants to be fired so he can collect the remainder of his contract. Versus, he does not want to retire. So I I hope. Well, they could do a mutual parting too. Yeah, or, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I, I think he want like he wants the Giants to owe him the rest of that contract. So I I, I this is what I hope. I hope the frustration comes from Wink Martindale's camp against Dable and not Dable against Wink. And I don't think it is. I think it's the opposite. Shit. Shit. What if uh, it's both? What if they both just hate each other? (laughs) Yeah. Um, So. Figure it out. Figure it out. You know know that gif? Figure it out. 
Yeah. Figure did it we, out. Did we talk actually talk about something and then I want to talk about the fucking ESPN split screen. We'll talk about the ESPN split screen. Oh boy, Candlewick Diner, we're talking about them. Again, they were not catering today, and that really broke my heart. So because they weren't catering today, I went to the Candlewick Diner. If you're you know, if you if you if you follow me on the socials on the Twitter, on the Instagram, you know that I was at the Candlewick Diner twice in the last like four or five days. Um, one of my one of my best friends, they, they got married. Uh, we actually stayed at a hotel that was right by that was right by uh, MetLife Stadium, uh, Patterson Plank Road. And I'm like, hey, guess what? Well, we got to go to Candlewick Diner because it's five. It's it's literally two minutes from Patterson Plank Road. It's five minutes. From MetLife Stadium, you got to go. They celebrated their 54th year in East Rutherford this past October. It's the perfect spot for a pregame breakfast or postgame dinner and drinks. They have a full-service bar in house bakery and free delivery. Extends a menu from breakfast to burgers to steaks to pasta. Um, and I also am excited. The last game of the season against the Eagles, uh, we will be going back to the Candlewick Diner to celebrate the end of the season and the end of the year. And hopefully we'll be celebrating that we're going to be Going to the playoffs. How do you like that? Um, so check out the Candlewick Diner in East Rutherford, New Jersey for all your diner favorites. Candlewick Diner has been supporting us for years. Check them out. Let them know that Talking Giants sent you. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad. You truly will be glad you did. I cannot say thank you enough to the Candlewick Diner. They are they are the best. Um, the ESPN split screen was so annoying. It's like you, if you're gonna do two Monday night football games, do two Monday night football games. Don't try and have one Monday night football broadcast. They did it for like three minutes straight at one point, like, it, and they kept on doing it. With drive, like just the Tom DeVito big run to get them down to the one yard line. Really wish he would have just been able to get that in there. But anyways, that was on split screen. They had that on split screen. Like, that, like we need to revolt against ESPN for that. Um. Giants now have the eighth pick in the draft. They had the seventh coming into week 14. Does that Don't move care. you at all? No. Um, the Giants are in a playoff race and uh, until they're not. The Giants are in a playoff race until they're not. Can I tell um, you, since we're at the end of the pause, something? Sure. I am pretty bummed that the Giants aren't in like the top five pick range. I'm even more bummed that we couldn't find a way to beat the Cowboys and the uh the beat the Jets and the Bills. I agree. Shit, sure, sure. But that's that's football. The, the, Giants that's football the Giants are not a good team. The Giants are not I I know. And the, the Giants are but dude, especially the way that we All right, forget the Bills game. The fucking Jets game will Yeah, remember will Tommy DeVito me. was there like, "Oh, you you going to trust that dude to throw?" Remember people got so mad at us for being like, "Hey, can we let this guy throw eight times?" And now we're now we're on the flip side coming to this game. Oh, how the turns table. Oh, how the turn tables. Um, uh, I don't. I don't know, man. I'm. I'm kind of just. Uh, I'm kind of just enjoying it. Yeah, me too. You, you know what me I mean? too. You know me. I'm not. I'm not like. A, I'll never like cry about my football team winning. Like it's something I don't control. And it's like, hey, guess what? We're the eighth worst team in the NFL. Like, I, it's not everyone can be the worst team in the NFL. It's just not the way it goes. But. I do want a new quarterback, and I want a top one. Um, so not it's not over yet, but uh, it it does it does bum me out a little bit. But uh, I'm enjoying the Devito the Devito insanity run. I I do think this. I, I know. Hey, the these wins don't mean anything. The Giants still have a bad team. The Giants still have a bad roster. I I, I get it. I, the Giants. The 2023 Giants season is a failure. Even if they even if they finish with eight wins, if they finish with seven, or they finish with it, it's a failure. The, the season is a failure. I I still think this little run of winning games and hey, they haven't lost a game you know in the, in the last month. I I still think this run of wins will do them better than if they just were to lose every single game out. Because while while you would want like while I hey in a perfect. Uh, in a perfect world, I want the Giants to lose. We'll also still have remain confidence in Joe Shane, Brian Dable, and and company. But that yeah. would not be the case if they if they had a Pat Shermer run of like losing. You know how many games did Pat Shermer lose in a row in two hundred nineteen? That's tough. That's a really tough pill to swallow in in today's world. And and unfortunately, you know this is this was part of my point when we were talking about tanking. And it's like, well, you want 
the Giants, we want the Giants to lose, but we also want them to be competitive in the losses, and that's somehow Brian Dable's fault. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. And that was my that was my overall point back then that I wasn't able to articulate that well. No, you articulated it well back then. That and after that Cowboys loss. Um, by the way, Cowboys look good. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, it's I'm December for that Christmas Day. Like the Saints game is like they're the. Anyways, we'll we'll talk. I about- expect to win. I mean, hey, I said it. I I predicted a Giants win, and I I tweet I tweeted it out Sunday Night Football after the Packers beat the Chiefs. I'm like, I think I think the Packers are too hot, and I think we're ca- I, I I think we caught them at the right time because I thought that they were too hot, too cocky. We're gonna bring them back down, and also that that Vegas spread of minus six and a half for a Giants home game that was that was too much. I said there's there's something there's something up here. Um, so I predicted a nice little Giants victory. I did look up flights to New Orleans. I'm not. Well, I was up. just going to ask you this because I am undefeated in Giants games. If they beat New Orleans, should I go to Philly for the Xmas game? WFAN is a bunch of frauds, by the way. Remember how earlier in the year they were like, "Oh, we're Tiki Barber." Uh, well, that's what I was going to say. They're not going anymore. I don't think so. I texted Sean. I texted Sean at the start of the tankathon, and I said, "Are we still going to Philly?" Because I think it would now, now that the season's basically over, which I guess it's not, beat the Saints, and the season's not over. Uh, now that the season's over, are we still going to Philly for Christmas? And he's like, "Oh no, the family." That I'm like, now it's even funnier if we go. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So if if, if Marash and Tiki go, I'll think about it. It's it's two forty five a.m. Should I call Sean Marash right now? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You match. Um, all right. So uh, that's an episode. We'll be back Thursday for the mailbag pod, I believe, right? We do we do Thursday after Monday Night Football and then a Friday yeah. preview pod. Yeah. Um, we appreciate Benton Whitley. We appreciate you guys. Dude, when, when's Victory Monday? It's been Victory Podcast after Victory Podcast lately. Um, it feels good. It, it's okay. Here's what's more exciting: this or the 2020 four game win streak. I actually think 2020 four game win streak was way more fun. Oh no! Yeah, t- no. 2020 win streak was way more fun because I was like believing. Like, well, oh, no, they legit. They legit had a. Uh, they may not have a shot now. They probably don't have a shot. They, they legit were did have a shot. 2020. Yeah. They legit had a shot to make the playoffs. And they I was were conv- first place in the division at one point. I was convinced if they played Tom Brady again at MetLife again where Deion Lewis was a two-point conversion away from like tying that game in the regular season, and Daniel Jones played horrible, I was convinced that they would beat them in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. We were beating the Bucs in the playoffs if we got that matchup. Guaranteed. We would have beat the Bucs. Tom Brady would not have won a seven Super Bowl if the Giants made the playoffs that year. All right. That's an episode. We will see you guys Thursday. Until then, let's go Big Blue.